Alright folks, greetings and peace. Welcome to episode 30 of my gameplay commentary of Final Fantasy 16. This is yours truly by Yonic and St. Francis Comet. Alright, so... We're, we're here. And we're going to try to find something. Enough to find. Not for those herbs. plant around here with blue flowers. I hope it's the right one. Should be enough to keep the infirmary stock for a while. Hopefully this will put Rodriguez's mind at ease. Rodriguez, huh? You know, because of um the A Hunted House 2, the movie of Marlon Wayans, we got floppy, you know, that you know that scene with um where the comedian floppy has asked the character of marlon wyans to guess his surname and marlon wyans said rodriguez and that floppy said that's racist bro <laughs> you know that's the only thing that really comes to my mind when i hear a surname rodriguez I hope you didn't have too much trouble finding the ammonia. Only the usual. Oh, yes. This is it. And more than I was expecting. I dare say the patient won't feel a thing. That is, unless I... You'll do fine. Taya trusts you. Which means I trust you. The hideaway would be lost without skilled physicists like yourself. Thank you for the kind words. Truly. But I'm sorry. I'm still terrified. The brand is more than just ink on flesh. It's a death sentence. What the heck are you talking about? Look of the wyvern tail lurking just below the surface of the skin. One ill-conceived incision. A single slip. And the poison fouls the patient's blood. Failure means death. And even success means tremendous pain. Okay, sir. Agonies, the wound heals. I became a physica to help people, not to kill them. I, I don't want to kill anyone. Curse breakers lead hard lives. And the operation is only the beginning. They toil in the shadows, risking life and limb knowing their efforts will win them neither glory nor acclaim and yet we never won for volunteers why do you think that is conviction they're willing to die they're willing to fight to give their lives to create a world where people like us can be more than mere possessions i know your work isn't easy but neither is going under the knife be a shoulder for your patients to lean on. Stay strong for them. <laughs> you sound like Tyre. Do you know what she once told me? It's natural for a 
patient to feel like they're suffering in solitude. And it's a physicist's duty to see that they don't. Thank you for helping me remember that. I won't falter. Not again. Let's check on Jill, our love. I'm feeling a lot better, thanks to Taya's remedies. But she insists I rest. And rest you should. Where's this? Hoxlip, Hoxlake, Brasaria. We can't do that without Shiba. What's up? Dave, where have you been? I've been wanting to ask you something about Togo. Where did you get him? Like, in the first place? Uh, my father brought him back from one of his expeditions into the Northern Territories. They were crossing a snowfield when they heard his cries, and seeing no sign of his pack, they took him in. What do you reckon, Tones? It certainly adds weight to the theory. Clive, one. I believe that Torgal may be no mere hound, but a rare frost wolf, an animal native to the far northern reaches of Valisthea. In one of our oldest bestiaries, I found reference to a frost wolf who served as guardian to an ancient queen of the north. Such was his mastery over ether, he could cast magics on command. His name was Fenrir. Oh shit. Fenrir that the again. Frost Wolf. Why well, just Torgal with that for us? The annals do not state it explicitly, but I have reason to believe this queen was a dominant of Shiva, a girl from the Northern Territories and her faithful hound. One awakens as the dominant of Shiva, and the other Fenrir saying that Jill granted Torgal his powers. What? Just like Fenrir. People called him my hound, but Torgal and Jill were inseparable. He grew up as a faithful companion to the dominant of Shiva, and years later, his powers awakened. Just when his master needed him the most. You're right. If it weren't for Torgal blasting those bastards to kingdom come, Jill would have been for it. Quite. Though Torgal's power is his own, his latent birthright as a frost wolf, it had only to be unlocked. Oh, get you, Torgal! <laughs> You're an even finer hound than we thought. And regarding your original concern, you need not fear for Torgal's health. Why, the beast has the appetite of a behemoth. Just this very morn, I found him with his nose buried in my nuts. There you are! I've been looking what? everywhere for you. Bernard's here. I need you to introduce us so we can get to work. <sighs> I shall be a moment. What the heck did Thor do? He's on to... Uh... Tom's nuts. 
sometime later. Okay. Interesting. It is brilliant. It is. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. You and everyone else. But I promise I'll pay you back. I'm gonna work my fingers to the bone for you lot. Starting right now. Just you wait. I'll make wonders like this world's never seen. Then I look forward to seeing them. What precisely is the purpose of this? Uh... No, that's settled. I wonder if Vivian's made any progress tracking down Koopka. Thanks for letting me do this, Clive. I'll pay you back, I promise. We have everything we need to begin work in earnest. And work in earnest we shall! <laughs> so I, I assume this is magic? Thanks Bernard? for my force, son. That was a good deed you did me. Only right I do you one in return. Though I did wonder if I'd bit off more than I could chew when Mid showed me her plans for the place. If she hadn't been there to tell me what to do, I wouldn't have known where to start. Alright, this is a good chapter. A somewhat slow chapter. Just to, uh... You know, uh... Put the fun back. Dungeoneering. There's a dungeon here. I think I'll wait till we get some ways to get into the dungeon. Thank you, Sid, for coming back to us. You're the glue keeping this place together. Okay, there are no more side quests. Okay, that's a good uh, one, one episode, something uh, of uh, fun. Here goes the hunt for Kupka. Largely in circles, we have myriad sightings of strange soldiers in unexpected places, but nothing definitive as yet. If only we knew for certain by what route he left Rosalind. The Northern Mountains. Keep at it. If anyone can piece this puzzle together, it's you. I'm willing to wait as long as it takes. What? Here? Would that be a problem? Do you know, Clive? I believe it a mercy that you didn't inherit your father's throne. Your poor people would surely live in fear of you. But the heck's that supposed to You have nothing to worry about on that front. I won't be claiming his crown. <laughs> that is a relief. Uh, Clive, have you got a minute? What now, Holmes? Uh, I'm a guest. A guest. Kupka. For your trouble. It was a pleasure. In hindsight. <laughs> Wait. Oh. Uh. Byron. Clive, my boy. Have a cask and stoke the ovens for your favorite uncle is here. <laughs> this is the twin twin side. The Empire Sambrek, seat of the Imperial Court. The Dalmechian government sues for peace. 
how shall we respond? If they're willing to accept their fault in the matter, I see no reason to refuse them. Still, we must insist on substantial reparations. The twin side stores are not as bottomless as reported. Aye, and we have many more mouths to feed. We shall just have to have the Dalmex empty their treasuries for us. Of course, none of this would have been possible without your timely intervention, Prince Olivier. Indeed, I doubt any of us would have had the courage to trade words with the mighty Titan, nor less the wit to win him over. The Empire owes you a great debt. May the blessing of the crystals go with you, Your Highness. May the blessing of the crystals go with you. Very good. Now, let us come to the question of precisely when the Dalmex will withdraw their troops. Theon's fire could rid us of them in mere moments. What? The men of the Fist will not withdraw until a peace treaty is concluded. Now let us keep the negotiations open, give them time to gather what gold and trinkets they can. And once they deliver that which we demand, what worth is a piece of parchment? Your Radiance, were Prince Dion to take the field, the enemy would surely send their own dominant to meet him. And while his highness would of course prevail, there would be heavy losses on both. You need not fear Hugo Kupka. He is engaged on the Western Front. Even were the Dalmex to send for him, he would not arrive in time. As much as I would enjoy witnessing a clash between Bahamut and Titan, it is not to be. And what of your subjects, Your Radiance? If the fighting spread to the city proper, the people would bear the brunt of it. He's right. There will be losses, it is true. Yet for every citizen who falls, another can be bred. For every home that burns, another can be built. The Empire will live on. This guy gives the vibes of, vibes of Garen Dicely in Final Fantasy XIII. Leon? Yes, sir. What the heck is that half brother of Bahamut doing always? Prepare for battle. Sire. Do not make me repeat myself. Return to your camp and await my orders. That is your wish, your radiance. I shall depart at once. That boy is always on his mother's lap. The stars are in agreement, your radiance. The shadow of treachery hangs over Prince Dion.
So Annabella's tales were true. You disappoint me, Dion. Bahamut. Phoenix. Titan. Shiba and Ifrit. Remains. And Ultima is just around the corner. Well, inside Phoenix. Dear Lord Byron Rossfield of the Seven High Houses, keep the tea. Ah, my dear nephew, how I've missed you. <laughs> how did you find this place, Uncle? Through the good offices of young Sir Wayne. He really is the most helpful fellow. As are you, I hear. The Guardians and those they freed tell the most outlandish tales of your heroics in Rosalith. Which is why I came, to learn the full truth of the matter. Sort the fact from the fiction, so to speak. You were working with the Guardians of the Flame to evacuate the people of Rosalith upon Tisolda. I was. I. Then I have questions for you. Please, come inside, Uncle. Gladly. Uh, you there? There are 2,000 gold talents in those chests. See that they're added to my nephew's coffers, would you? 2,000? 2,000? And I'm afraid that is all I know. A fleet sailing south past Port Isolde. Most intriguing. Forgive me for not being able to tell you more. I hadn't the faintest idea Coco withdrew wounded from Rosalith. Still less that my own nephew dealt the decisive blow. What do you think, Vivian? I think, with this news of the Dalmechian fleet and recent reports of the Royalists' movements, that the final piece of the puzzle has fallen into place. Come here and I'll show you. What's going on? Alright, let's go. Damn, look at that place. Balisteya. It is known that Kupka's forces entered Rosaria via its unguarded coast. So can the same be said of your visitors from Walud? Certainly, her royal navy is famed for the efficiency with which it bears her knights from one battlefield to the next. And in the Ein Heyar, or Black Galleon, she boasts a vessel nigh as swift, and every bit as feared as the kingdom's legendary cavalry. A fitting flagship for a land apart, her naval presence being crucial to her ambitions beyond Ash. Yes. It seems safe to assume that the Royalists did indeed enter Rosaria from the sea. So then, had you a vested interest in Titan's survival, whither would you take him? Why home to Drake's Fang, a place rich enough in ether to conjure the magics needed to mend his hurts. But would that not entail an arduous voyage around the Southern Cape? Let us say that the Royalists did put ashore with a mind to spirit Kupka away from under your very nose. Could that truly have been their plan for him? To load him aboard one of the ships flying Republican colors sighted off the coast near Port Isolde. To spend weeks at sea, being tossed hither and yon by unforgiving waves, his life hanging in the balance. No, the journey would mean Titan's death, and Kupka's faithful creatures would not allow it. So what then was the plan of our Waluda friends? Reports suggest they made not for the coast, but for the desert. And by cutting through the Velcroy, 
A party traveling light would have tightened back in his bed days before a galley could lurch into port. To wit, it was the Royalists, not the Republicans, who effected Hugo Kupka's safe retreat. I would stake your life on it. So they're in the desert only, huh? So it was the Waludas who spirited the wretch away. Now I think about it, there was something a little strange about the ships I saw. The men seemed almost crestfallen, as if in mourning, as if they believed or were made to believe that their master was dead. You have a keen mind, Lord Rosfield. And you have your answer. To find Kupka, you have merely to follow the Royalist trail across the Velcroy. It may well have gone cold by now. But as they say in the Republic, all roads lead to Drake's fan. Uh, allow me to accompany you part of the way. As luck would have it, I had intended to journey Candleward on business after visiting you here. The Fang would be but a short detour. I'd be glad of the company. Give me a moment to make ready. I need to tell my friends what we've learned. And where we're going. Very well, but be quick about it, my boy. Time waits for no man. Will we get Jill to our side? Finished outfit in a little workshop by right here. With a Otto. Kupka's at Drake's Fang. I'll be leaving before sunset. You're not going in there alone, are you? Don't worry. I'm not going there to destroy the Mother Crystal. All I'm after is Kupka's head. I won't risk any more than I have to. I promise. The Lanza and the Fang are all Kupka's personal fiefdom. You have any trouble on the way? You ask for Rosina Dalimil. Some call her the Desert Hare. Who is she? An old associate of Sid's. And only Sid's. All I know is the name. And that they used to meet at the Dalimil Inn. We've heard nothing from her since he died. But I'm thinking maybe the new Sid might be able to bring her back into the fold. Thanks. I'll keep that in mind. So, uh, what about your uncle? I mean, he's welcome to stay, but... Don't look so worried. He'll be coming with me. Thank fuck for that. Gav, Otto, I'm leaving you two in charge. You can count on us. Sure. Jill staying here, and that's that. I should have never let her go with you to Rosalith. All right, then come on. Stop with the. Uh... Well, she may be really, uh... really down and out, folks. But the dog stay. The dog come comes with the. Uh... No, and how may I assist you today? We met under curious circumstances. Naturally. Lord Byron Rossfield. I heard tell. Why?
Your nemesis awaits, Clive. You have merely to cross a burning desert, then worm your way into the bowels of an enemy fortress. Best of luck. That's nothing. You know, the Dragonborn. Wait. Ah, my favorite pupil. Of course. The Dalmakian Republic petitions the Holy Empire of Sunbreak for an armistice that their hair to purport the siege of Twinside might at last be ended. Emperor Sylvester, however, means to press the advantage gifted to him by Prince Olivier, artfulness. So has been led to believe. To this end, he orders his first son, Prince Dion, to make a funeral part of the retreating feast. Here you are. The armistice. The Talmekian. Okay, the armistice, huh? Very good. May the winds of fortune be forever at your back, Sid. <laughs> Don't say that. No. The last thing you need when you're crossing the desert is for the wind to pick up. Thanks for the words of comfort. Damn. Let's go. All right, Uncle. I'm ready to depart. Shall we? We shall. Come, let us away to adventure. Sand, huh? I was a young man when last I walked this path. There's an old trading post not far from here. The road to Drake's Fang leads through it. The trading post it is. Going to fight Byron Rossfield. This got all the vibes of um, Sanubia Sands. The destination lies over that dune beyond the ruins. Mark them well, Clive. It's all too easy to lose one's bearings in the sands. We got a map. <sighs> Ugh! <sighs> 
Just trying to see the map here, making sure that um before we can go and uh, and of course it's all about leveling up again. The Dalmasca Esther Sand, the Sanubia Sand. Well, everything that's needed in a Final Fantasy uh, world is in here. You got um, planes, you got snow, mitral belt. There's nothing really uh, preventing uh, Clive to go to that um, desert, northern desert. Let's go.
pretty girl. Yeah. See a thing. Come, Clive. Let us turn back before we lose our way. We cannot travel by this. Let's go. The game is not letting us travel this point of um safe all right we're in the sands We got another trophy and I don't know why but I'm not I'm not complaining it's just that I was not targeting anything I was just trying to play the game by learning the move set of Titan The move set of Titan is better and more compelling than the move set of Garuda Hmm. 
<laughs> Let's enlarge. Hmm. Have you lost your way already, my boy? The ruins mark the road to the inn. I know we're supposed to go here, but um, come on. Good There's a place there that um, does not seem to be uh, affected by the the sandstorm and of course in final fantasy lightning returns there's also a desert there called the uh you know uh, all right there's yusnaan the uh the dead dunes yeah it's a desert also and that's a staple of final fantasy you know world complete in in place we got some snow we got some city we got some desert and we got some you know, other things
Bye bye. I can say with all confidence that I'm getting good at this game. So I'm about to finish episode 30 folks. My gameplay commentary Final Fantasy 16. This is extremely fun. This has definitely over exceeded Final Fantasy 15 but you know, with regard the story and the and the fun factor, I can uh, I can say that this have already surpassed 13. But 13-2 is another story in Lightning Returns. It has a lot of combination, so really happy that uh, this game is really uh, giving justice to the weight that uh, gamers were subjected to and of course you know this is a really good a serious character for game of the year who do you think those soldiers were in the end friends of friends Finally made his move. Yes, I expect that's why there's so many soldiers in town to deal with any imperial requirements. Hmm. So Kupka is. Yeah, Kupka knows what's. He knows. Wait, what? What the heck? I thought there was a trade post here. I don't want to miss anything here, so... Alright, so this is where we'll just stop by, make a little bit of stop over. There's an inn here. Valley of the Sands. Oh. Titan's Wake. The Fields of Koraba. The Sickle. The Jaw. Oh, Dame. Now, this is what one heck of a desert. Alright, folks. So. Just gonna stop right here. One, three, one. It's okay. Well, it is stated there that uh, if we mastered something, then we can put it in the. Uh, yeah, let's start with this. Yep.
All right, folks. Uh, thank you, everyone. God bless you all and stay safe out there, folks. We will continue this in episode 31 of my gameplay commentary of Final Fantasy 16. What a great game so far. Stay safe out there.